This, this is Saurabh, and, and you're listening, listening to my, my favorite talk, talk show, show, The Weekly Show, show with Aditya. This is episode 256 on the 4th of September 2020. One of the biggest reasons coaching centers mushroomed all over the country is because of this obsession to clear these entrance exams. To clear these entrance exams, to get into a premier institute and graduate out of this institute and then look for a good job. That is what the basic purpose of an individual is. In my previous episode, I talked about the link between or rather the no link between education and economy that we do not go to a school or college or any such educational institution just because it's linked to the economy and it's all about getting a job or getting a livelihood. And it wouldn't have been the case. Educational institutes would have meant much more that getting into these require considerable effort. That you go into these institutions only because you have a passion for that particular subject. Not because you have no other option and the only way to survive and earn a livelihood is to have that tag of a premier or an Ivy League institute. On your CV, I even a couple of episodes ago and those who have been listening carefully to my talk shows would recall that I talked about that this particular pandemic circus was an opportunity to reset the educational system and just abolish the exams or remove this concept of exams for good. But no, the educational authorities have decided to continue with this and their reasoning is that these exams are a test of an individual's competence. Well, my listeners may have a different view but my viewpoint is straight. Exams do not test an individual's competence. In fact, they test nothing but your rote power. How much can you mug up in a small amount of time? in the week or hours before you are supposed to give this premier exam, this lucrative exam. That's all they test. And then adding fuel to this fire of this road method are these coaching centers which are an embarrassment to the educational ecosystem. They encourage students to have this road mindset. But ironically, it is not just the students who are equally under pressure. The passive stakeholders, that is the parents, the schools and other such active and passive stakeholders play a huge role in pushing further this road mindset. The creative mindset is only 5% of an individual who once upon entering a coaching institute, whether it is for the medical schools or the engineering schools or any such overhyped elite institution, once they get this habit of going into a road method or as these coaching centers provide notes or cliff note version of chapters. Coaching centers hand you this module and then they influence you enough that these modules are enough to understand. Do not go through the entire book. Do not have your own interpretation. Whatever these modules say, whatever the text is in this module that is sealed. One hand, the federal government and the state governments make an effort. For now, let's say they are making an effort because there is still a long way to go. They make an effort and they try to encourage or are trying to encourage competency-based teaching and learning which includes practical knowledge, which includes actually using your own intellect 
to interpret an idea irrespective of which field you belong to because for me there is no distinction between whether you are a science student or a student of any other profession well in that case i am also from an elite institute an elite journalism school which is as competent as these iits and their other affiliates but for that i did not spend years getting brainwashed in a coaching center i did not even bother to think much about the entrance exam i went with a mindset like a cricketer goes with a mindset when they play the 20 over version instead of students you could have robots in a tuition center as students and you wouldn't know the difference whether they are actually learning something or they are just in one way mugging up and encouraging rote learning because this constant spoon feeding doesn't end here when these same students enter one of these institutions then what happens is that they expect the institution which is at this point a college to provide them notes to provide them cliff note versions and when they learn that colleges are not meant to provide you with such notes colleges are not meant for that they are in for a shock because they don't know what to do because they have spent a majority of their life being provided notes spoon fed not having to work even once there is zero interpretation from their side and when they enter college they are in shock they don't know how to cope up with fact that in a college or any other such institution you are basically on your own But what is one of the biggest reasons apart from students wanting to enter such colleges and the coaching centers exploiting their vulnerabilities because an idea has been spread that mainstream education system in india suffers from multiple limitations poor infrastructure dearth of trained teachers and outdated curriculums another outdated premise is that regular school education is unequipped to prepare students for highly competitive exams so now my question is is that all schools are for is it all that we are here to do to prepare for competitive exams and then exaggerate these exams and put these exams on a pedestal you know how the education system is going nowhere when the premise is that students find recourse in coaching institutes to bridge the gap between classroom learning and preparation for entrance exams if you have read my articles about the same coaching centers are not concerned about whether a student actually learns something when they discuss a subject there is no discussion in these so called tuition or coaching centers they come up with only one purpose they have a purpose of commerce and more students if they clear these exams then more is their livelihood or their earning because then they can exploit the situation and tell everyone through various ads in print electronic and pseudo media that if you come to our coaching centers we will give you and equip you with the process to clear such over hyped entrance exams as long as we continue to give entrance exams the kind of importance the kind of hype more than they deserve till that time these tuition centers will continue to exploit the situation so yes the day entrance exams go away so will these tuition centers What is the first word that comes to your mind when you think about stress? Well, to me, it is manufactured and fabricated. Because it baffles me that why individuals get stressed. What do they get stressed about, and why do they get stressed about things which are 
unimportant. Let's link this to the previous topic, entrance exams or any kind of exams that occur and students are stressed out. Why should you be stressed out because of exams? A result in exam is not directly proportional to your competitive and your aptitude and your attitude. The results in exams are what they are. Once the results come out, they become outdated. They become history. So I see no reason for anyone to be stressed when exams approach. I never did. In fact, unlike most of my contemporaries, I never did any last moment studying. When I would enter an exam hall, I would see my fellow students hurriedly going through the topics, trying to turn the pages of their notes and learn everything in a matter of 20-25 minutes before the exams. What is the purpose of this? What is the point? Rather, why don't you study slowly, slowly throughout the year instead of getting all panicky 20 minutes before the exams and even if you don't do well, what is the worst thing that can happen? You will give the exam again. Well, nobody is going to question you. Those mark sheets are irrelevant once you start something useful. Once either you work for someone else or you are your own boss. Those mark sheets are what they will be. They will be another piece of paper in your chest of drawers where you keep those numerous certificates. So for students, I don't see the reason for getting stress. There is no point. For example, there has been a lot of debate over whether the current entrance exam which were already delayed because of this pandemic circus should be conducted well they are being conducted though a few individuals and organizations are saying the opposite well that's a different factor but the fact that now they are being conducted and are seen as an individual's competence which has come from the highest authority on any country which then means that students have to give exams and add to it all the social distancing and the multiple use of sanitizer rule and all the bizarre rules that come with it. But why stress? If you don't clear, it doesn't matter. Do something else. These entrance exams are not the end of the world. So according to an article, social and environmental factors can contribute to stress, as do social and financial pressures. Well, let's look at all these terms separately. Social and environmental factors. Right now, there is no social interaction with a human being. That is, we are not physically meeting someone. So yes, there is the stress of not meeting an individual which are influenced by environmental factors because of this pandemic circus. We are limited to virtual meets and the only physical meets that are happening are happening. But still we have to maintain some bizarre rules of social distancing and wearing masks. Is this a matter of stress? In my viewpoint, no. The irony is that we ourselves build stress, which means that if an individual does not go on these pseudo media sites and give his or her opinion, which is anyways for the sake of publicity and not because they mean what they are saying, they are stressed. And also if a pseudo celebrity does not give his or her viewpoints on something that is happening around the world or something that is happening limited to a geographical area then these trolls well trolls are just human beings trolls are just virtual bullies but we allow these trolls to say things to us and then we go on the defensive that how can you say these things well if you don't want people to say something then don't start the conversation. And just because you are a celebrity, it doesn't mean that you need to say something on these pseudo media sites all the time. In fact, the best thing would be to take a break, switch off all your gadgets, whether it's 
your phone, your internet, your broadband, your computer, your mobile internet, whatever gadgets you have, just switch them off. But in the 21st century, switching off your gadgets is like a no-no. How can you switch off your gadgets? Your gadgets are supposed to be defining you. How can you go analog? You cannot go analog in a overtly digital world. Cause for majority of individuals, that mobile device is more than just what it was made for. If you remember, the mobile device was made exclusively for calls and texts, but we wouldn't call ourselves a modern individual, which is a misnomer in itself or a pseudo modern world that if the mobile phone is not used for more than calls and texts, if it doesn't become your wrist watch or an individual's calendar, of the millions of apps we have on the phone. This article in Times of India puts it quite astutely. As people increasingly use their cellular phones to listen to music and watch movies and TV shows, will other sound systems and viewing devices become redundant? Maybe for that part of the population, for me, no. I still use the television to watch movies and TV shows. I still have a wristwatch. I still have a physical calendar. And I switch off my mobile phone and my internet when I want. And I don't feel as I am missing out on something when it comes to information. Because I have newspapers for information and other such sources of physical information. This article sums up why we are stressed in a beautiful manner. Phones are truly phony in that they are used for everything except for phoning. As it's considered bad manners and being intrusive of other people's time and privacy to call them, it's deemed better to text the person you want to contact. Stress is subjective, but if examples are to go by, should we be concerned that a certain Indian player that is Virat Kohli has now bits of white hair in his beard just because he is the captain? Well, that's a presumption. It's a simple premise. We have allowed ourselves to be stressed out. What is the solution? Well, first of all, switch off your phones, switch off your internet when and whenever you can. And then don't be stressed about petty things like exams and jobs because these things are not the end of the world. And the best way to remove such fabricated stress from your mind is BYOB. Be your own boss. It's time for a special Friday evening song, the final countdown. We are leaving together, but still it's farewell, and maybe we'll come back to earth, who can tell? I guess there is no one to blame, we're leaving ground, leaving ground, will things ever be the same again? It's the final countdown. Oh, it's the final countdown. We are heading for Venus, Venus. And still we stand tall. Cause maybe they've seen us, seen us and welcome us all. Yeah, with so many light years to go. And things to be found, to be found. I'm sure that we'll all miss her, so it's the final countdown, the final countdown, oh yeah, it's the final countdown, the final countdown, oh yeah, it's the final countdown, we are leaving together, we'll all miss her, so it's the final countdown.
or sleep it is a gentle thing beloved from pole to pole to mary queen the praise be given she sent the gentle sleep from heaven that slid into my soul the silly buckets on the deck that had so long remained i dreamt they were filled with dew and when i awoke it rained my lips were wet my throat was cold my garments all were dank sure i had drunken in my dreams and still my body drank i moved and could not feel my limbs i was so light almost i thought that i had died in sleep and was a blessed ghost as soon as i heard a roaring wind it did not come a near but with its sound it shook the sails that were so thin and sear the upper air burst into life and a hundred fire flags sheen to and fro they were hurried about and to and fro and in and out the wan stars danced between and the coming wind did roar more loud and the sails did sigh like sedge and the rain poured down from one black cloud the moon was at its edge the thick black cloud was cleft and still the moon was at its side like waters shot from some high crag the lightning fell with never a jag a river steep and wide the loud wind never reached the ship yet now the ship moved on beneath the lightning and the moon the dead men gave a groan the groan disturbed the all approach not speak nor move their eyes it had been strange even in a dream to have seen those dead men rise the helmsman steered the ship moved on yet never a breeze up blew the mariners all began work the ropes where they were wont to do they raised their limbs like lifeless tools we were a ghastly crew the body of my brother's son stood by me knee to knee the body and i pulled at one rope but he said not to me i fear the ancient mariner be calm thou wedding guest it was not those souls that fled in pain which to their courses come again but a troop of spirits blessed for when it dawned they dropped their arms and clustered round the mast sweet sounds rose slowly through their mouths and from their bodies passed around around flew each sweet sound then darted to the sun slowly the sounds came back again now mixed now one by one sometimes a dropping from the sky i heard the sky lark sing sometimes all little birds that are how they seem to fill the sea and air with their sweet jargoning and now it was like all instruments now like a lonely flute and now it is an angel's song that makes the heaven be mute it ceased yet still the sail made on a pleasant noise till noon a noise like of a hidden brook in the leafy month of june that to the sleeping woods all night singeth a quiet tune till noon we quietly sailed on yet never a breeze did breathe slowly and smoothly went the ship moved onward from beneath under the keel nine fathom deep from the land of mist and snow the spirit slid and it was he that made the ship to go the sails at noon left of their tune and the ship stood still also the sun right above the mast had fixed her to the ocean but in a minute she began stir with a short uneasy motion backwards and forwards half her length with a short uneasy motion then like a point horse let go she made a sudden bound 
it flung the blood into my head and i fell down in swamped how long in that same fit i lay i have not to declare but bird my living life return i heard and in my soul discerned two voices in the air is it he quoth one is this the man by him who died on cross with his cruel bow he laid full low the harmless albatross the spirit who bided by himself in the land of mist and snow he loved the bird that loved the man who shot him with his bow the other was a softer voice as soft as honey dew quoth he the man had penance done and penance more will do now it's time for some light pg woodhouse reading but a girl doesn't give a fellow the bums rush just because she's told him to stick to the sprouts and spinach and she hears that he's been wading into the steak and kidney pie i said trying to reassure myself but not getting within several yards of it i bet madeline would and so thinking it over did i you can't judge goofs like madeline basse by ordinary standards what the normal popsy would do and what she would do in any given circumstances were two distinct and separate things i had not forgotten the time when she had severed relations with gussy purely because through no fault of his own he got stinko when about to present the prices at market snods bury grammar school you know how high her ideals are yes sir if someone were to drop an incautious word to her about tonight's orgy those wedding bells would not ring out gussy would be at liberty and she would start looking about her for somebody else to fill the vacant spot i really think you will have to reconsider that decision of yours bertie and do just this one more bit of pinching oh my sainted aunt i spoke as hearts do when heated in the chase and panting for cooling streams it would have been plain to do far less astute mind than mine that this blighted being had got me by the short hairs and was in a position to dictate tactics and strategy blackmail of course but the gentler sex love blackmail not once but on several occasions has my aunt the helia bent me to her will by threatening that if i didn't play ball she would bar me from her table thus dashing anatole's lunches and dinners from my lips show me a delicately nurtured female and i will show you a ruthless napoleon of crime prepared without turning a hair to put the screws on some unfortunate male whose services she happens to be in need of there ought to be a law how did you like this episode leave your suggestions on my youtube channel and email me at aditya the writer at gmail.com send me an email about the various songs you would like to hear and various subjects you would like to be discussed remember they should be pertaining to sports education entertainment and pop culture Bembo Khushua For more awesome content 
Tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya.